Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's a blessing to be with the church again um, uh, here in the chapel and even over Zoom for our brothers and sisters who are uh, watching the prayer meeting through our Zoom platform. It is a, a, again once another uh, prayer meeting and another blessing to be able to gather together and do these things. Um, one interesting uh, memory that I have from childhood uh, was Christmas and, and, and gi gift giving, being given gifts for Christmas. I always enjoyed that a lot when I was, uh, when I was younger. Um, and if you notice gift giving, when you're younger, um, you tend to enjoy or like gifts that are more more or less, I guess, useless, uh, you know, toys and, and all of these things. But if you notice, when you uh, grow older, you tend to ask for gifts that are more useful. Uh, socks, uh, shorts, mga ganon, shirts. Um, so, nung bata ka, medyo hindi mo gusto pag natatanggap mo yung mga ganun lang. Um, and when you do uh, grow older, you tend to enjoy those gifts more, right? And very similarly, our passage this uh, uh, evening for our devotion is really see an introduction of seeing how uh, God dispenses gifts to the church and how we uh, get to use these gifts. No? And, and um, these gifts are ultimately given to us by the Holy Spirit of God. So please turn uh, your Bibles to uh, 1 Corinthians 12, and we will be going through the first three verses. I hear now the words of the living and true God. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says, Jesus is accursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except in the Holy Spirit. So as far as reading uh, God's Word, let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, this evening that we get to gather for prayer and for uh, worshiping you and glorifying you. We pray, Lord God, that you would bless this time as we go into your Word. Teach us. Um, that which will build up your church and that which will glorify your name and that's, that which will help us and lead us to say, Jesus is Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. So uh, tonight we're actually starting a new section uh, of teaching in the passage of uh, 1 Corinthians. And we are uh, going into a, a section wherein Paul is about to address the concerns of the Corinthian church regarding spiritual gifts. And the passage we're dealing with tonight is an introduction really to what spiritual gifts are. And through this introduction, the Apostle Paul wants the Corinthian church to understand and he wants us to understand uh, the theology about spiritual gifts. And this is why he says in verse 1 that he doesn't want us to be uninformed. Uh, regarding the spiritual gifts, the, the Apostle Paul doesn't want to let the church be ignorant. So, uh, for our devotion tonight, we'll try to enter into the teaching of uh, Paul regarding the spiritual gifts. And what we are reminded of in learning about these things is that, is that we should not be ignorant. We shouldn't be uninformed. We should know the heart and core of spiritual gifts. And to help us with that, I've divided our devotion tonight into two simple points. The first is informed about spiritual gifts. And the second, transformed by spiritual gifts. So let's get into the first, informed about spiritual gifts. Verse 1 and 2 says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you, when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Now the matter of concern for the Apostle Paul here is truth. 
the truth about what is right, what is correct, and what is good. So the Apostle Paul is saying that he doesn't want us to be uninformed or ignorant about the truth of spiritual gifts. Now, the nature of a false or pagan religion is that there's no proper guidance towards the truth. Uh, the practice of spirituality in pagan worship is just really all over the place. And one pagan religion can say that this is right, and another pagan religion can say that another way is right. And either way, uh, none of it is right because pagan religion uh, engages in the worship of false idols or what Paul here refers to as mute idols, meaning they are um, unintelligent or dumb idols is what um, the Apostle Paul means. So um, Paul wanted to inform them that the nature of uh, Christian spiritual gifts are different from that of uh, pagans. They are in accordance with the truth. And because it's accordance with the truth, and it's in accordance with the truth, its function is also to build up the community of truth, which is the church. Now, the situation of the Corinthian church was a very painful situation. There were some people who were disheartened, um, probably feeling doubts about their faith, uh, because they didn't have the gifts that other people had. And there were some who were filled more of with pride uh, because they had gifts that other people in their church didn't. But the truth that we have to understand about spiritual gifts is that it's not like that of pagan religion, as Paul just mentioned. In pagan religion, with false, mute, and dumb gods, there are no true gifts. All gifts in these religions are uh, personal abilities of each person. So they're not really gifts, but they are own skills. Uh, no wonder that the Corinthian church were in a difficult situation. Some who despaired over not having the same spiritual gifts as others, and some who were gloating and proud because they had spiritual gifts that others didn't have. Because in their former faith, they were ignorant about true gifts. But in the Christian faith, all gifts are true gifts because all gifts are given by God. And so it puts into perspective the gifts that we receive. It helps us to understand that some may have gifts that we don't have, and yet we must be faithful in using what was given to us by God. And also, that we might have gifts that some don't have. And so we must be faithful in using these because it is given by God. Either way, these gifts function to build up and help the church grow. And so we shouldn't be uninformed that the nature of spiritual gifts in the church, in the church of God, is that for the benefit of his church to build it up and to help us to grow in him as our head. In fact, Ephesians 4 tells us that God has given us gifts to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. And so it's actually good for us to ask ourselves, what are the gifts that the Lord has given us? Have we confirmed them through the church? And do we help build up the church through these gifts. Maybe we're gifted to encourage. Have we encouraged our brethren? Are we gifted with teaching? Have we taught our brethren? Are we gifted evangelists? Have we faithfully used these 
gifts to preach the gospel to others. So have we as you know, Christians dis- discern and prayed about these gifts? Do we help build up the church? Or are we like the Corinthians who are discouraged because others have gifts that we don't have? Or prideful that we have gifts that others don't have? So this is good for us to reflect on, to understand that we must use our gifts to build up the body of Christ, the body of believers, the people beside you right now, the people we see every Lord's Day. It's also important for us to understand so that we're not just, as what Paul says, uninformed. That the function of our gifts as Christians is so that we may be built up into our head who is Christ. And that's also why Paul reminds us of the centrality of our faith, which is our second point, transformed by spiritual gifts. Now, verse 3 says, Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says, Jesus is accursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except in the Holy Spirit. Being given a spiritual gift means that you are indwelt by the Spirit of God, of course. We have spiritual gifts because the Spirit of God is in us and also among us in the church. And to build up the body of Christ means that we're building up the body wherein the Spirit dwells. And that's why... No one is speaking in the spirit of our God or no Christian will ever say Jesus is accursed. Meaning no Christian will ever blaspheme God. This was the way of pagans. This was the way of uh, religious Jews of their day who claimed that Jesus was accursed. And inversely, you cannot give reverence to God unless by His Holy Spirit. Now, if you're not indwelt by the Holy Spirit, you cannot truly give God glory and honor and praise. And so that's why nobody can claim that Jesus is Lord unless the person is speaking in God's Spirit. Nobody can ultimately accept the Lordship of Jesus Christ unless that person has been changed by the Spirit of God. And this brings us to the truth of God's gospel. The first and foremost gift of the Spirit is in the Spirit's transforming work by the grace of God in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the work that opens our eyes to sin and brings us to a realization of our need of Jesus Christ. It helps us see that Jesus is not an accursed man who died on the cross for nothing, but he was the prophesied God-man, accomplishing an eternal redemptive work. He lived in perfect obedience to God's law, was completely holy and righteous in our place, and died to pay for our sin. And so it's not only, sorry, it's only, through this gospel, that, God, that, that someone can say, Jesus is Lord. The transformative spiritual gift is first and foremost the spiritual gift that opens the eyes, that changes the heart from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh, that transforms the mind, and that turns our whole being from one who would blaspheme Christ to one who would give him reverence as Lord. It's important for us to discern, am I using the gifts that I was given within the foundation of God's saving grace? Maybe we're good at many things, but if this greatness and goodness is not founded on the work of the Holy Spirit in helping us become obedient to the Lordship of Christ, then it is of no use. Only in the Holy Spirit can we, as the body of Christ, serve with Jesus as our Lord. Only in the Holy Spirit can we be transformed by the gospel of Jesus. 
only in the Holy Spirit can we truly build up the body of Christ. Even if we serve the church day in and day out, 24-7, and we look so good to the brethren, if we do not possess the Holy Spirit of God, it does not matter. It does not matter. One day, it will be for nothing. So it's a reminder for us, brothers and sisters, to bow ourselves to the Lordship of Christ through the Holy Spirit, without whom all our gifts are in vain. Our service to the church, our attendance, all the things that we can do, it is in vain if we do not have the Spirit of God. An encouragement, though, is one day, uh, a day will come, really, when we will see how the Holy Spirit has built up the body of Christ through us who have proclaimed Jesus as Lord in the Spirit. We will see the work of the Spirit in giving us gifts, saving us from our, uh, our pagan former lives, and giving us hope in Christ Jesus in order to build up Christ's body. And we'll be able to see that complete work. The complete work of God in redeeming people for himself, for his glory, and for his lordship. So as we come into prayer tonight, let's remember the great truth that God has generously given gifts to build his church. The first gift being our salvation in Jesus Christ. The succeeding gifts uh, were to help each other be built up in Christ and glorify him as one body. All of these that we might be able to love God with everything that we are and love the body as he has called us to. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the time that you have given us for your word and providentially giving us um, your truth and the Holy Spirit. And we pray, Lord God, that you would bless our time and sustain us as a church, Lord God, as we go through um, difficult times. And we pray, Lord God, that you would bless this church and help us, Lord God, to be faithful to your word, to, to be faithful to your gospel. May we fear you, Lord God, above everything and not fear man for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.